Great. Are you at home now? Oh, yes, I am. Yeah. Are you at home or is that your office? Yeah, yeah no, I'm home. <laughs> oh, that's I'm nice. Home. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll just uh, welcome everybody who might be viewing this video at some point in the future. Uh, welcome everyone to our AMA Ask Me Anything Monday with William Littlewood, uh, whom I'm going to call Bill, who's joining us today from Hong Kong. So how's everything going there, Bill? Oh, fine. Thank you. And th thank you very much for this invitation to Korea. <laughs> <laughs> thank I, you I, so I really, much. I'm really grateful for it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I know you were the, a little the, hesitant. The, the right? flight was very. The flight was very easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's always nice, right? Zoom is is very convenient for yeah. this kind of connection. Yeah. No, no layover or anything. No. So I, I know you were a little bit hesitant uh, to take us up on this invitation, though. So I hope I hope this proves a relatively painless hour for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it will be. Once I get into it, I, I, I'm always reluctant at first to sort of uh, stand into the in, stand onto the main stage. But but then you you know rather like when you're giving a talk, when right. once you start, you you sort you get uh, enveloped in it, don't you? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And fortunately, this particular video series is all about you. You know, all about. The, the passions and, and paths that you've taken in your life, all of the possibilities, what drove your choices. Yeah. Um, because I think a lot of people are kind of looking at the opportunities around them and trying to figure out where to go, what to do, and how maybe the choices have shaped their lives, just like yeah. your choices and opportunities have shaped where you are today. Yeah. So that should make it a relatively easy you know, presentation. Uh, basically, just we want to know about you. Oh, well, as far as choices are concerned, I wish I could say that I was one of those people who chose early in his life what he wanted to do, <laughs> but I, I did not. I, I, I had a friend at university. He, he, he decided very quickly that he, he wanted to go into school teaching and, and he wanted to do this and that. And another one decided that he wanted to go into the church, knew exactly what to do. I'm afraid I didn't. I left university, not frankly, not knowing what, what I wanted to do, really. So I, I, I happened to gravitate to Germany teaching in a Berlitz school. Uh, languages in uh, I, 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 I guess they're still around in Germany I, but, but that, that's what I did and well I, I sort of enjoyed it and thought well I, I'll, I'll give this a go <laughs> when I go back to England go back to the UK rather uh, and, 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 and so that that's what I did um, I can't say at first that I was really enthusiastic about teaching because, <laughs> because you, you know you know because um, is it but for somebody who's just come from university and especially somebody who's a little bit sort of um, not exactly extrovert, you know, teaching is actually quite a, a, an unusual situation to be in, isn't it? You're in charge of the whole situation yourself. If you don't do anything, nothing happens. Well, or something does happen, but the things that happen are not very nice things that happen uh, <laughs> if, if you don't do anything. So I, I, I sort of drifted into it and, and, and got, got on, on and, and gradually got, got used to it. And uh, in a way, that's, that's, that's sort of what my life has been a bit like that, really, sort of see, seeing, t taking opportunities which come up, not really planning everything, but sort of seeing what is there and choosing something. Fortunately, uh, I've, I've been quite lucky in the choices that I've made. You, you know, not, 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 no, no, no great sort of um, credit to me or, or always, but just sort of the way things have been. And that's how, uh, well, that, that's how I've ended up <laughs> where I am, really. And I, I think people sometimes use the word serendipity. Mm -hmm. I'm never quite sure what it means, but I think it's something to do with finding lucky, lucky spots where you happen to be. And, 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 and that's very much what it's been with me, rather than a, a well thought out, um, objective oriented um, a career where you know what you're going to do next time I'll go on to that, you know. Um, I, I, I remember a well known person when he first went into higher education, he had 
perfectly well mapped out what he wanted to do. He wanted to establish himself first in the UK, then he wanted to branch out in, in, into, other, into other countries and so on and so on. He had it perfectly mapped out like a, like a plan of, of, of action, you know? Uh, I, I admire people who can do that. Um, Although I, I do sometimes still wonder whether they might miss things on the way, because if you plan everything in advance, you, 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 sometimes you don't notice the things that come your way unexpected and, and, and that. So, yeah. Um, anyway, I, I'm sort of glad that the, 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 the paths happened to, to bring me the way that they have done up to this stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I have a feeling a lot of our viewers are going to be very comforted to know that you didn't start out with this in mind, because I think a lot of us teaching in ELT have uh, come to it as a second career or as, a, you know, I'll be in Korea for just one or two years maximum, and yeah. then we stay here. I'm here, you know, I came here for one year, I've been here for 15, so yeah. I think it's very comforting. Uh, so yeah. how, what did you major in as an undergrad then before so you started French, teaching German? French and German. Okay, so that's how modern, you were attracted. Modern, modern languages, that's how I came in, yeah. So, uh, so I, I taught in English in, the Ber in this Berlitz school. Well, to be honest, in the Berlitz school, at that, that's, at that point, um, the, you, you didn't have to have any qualifications, really. You only had to be able to speak English, to be honest. Uh, I, I think they changed now. I, th I think they, ch they changed the system and it's more uh, strict. But, but at that point, anybody who spoke English could go in and teach English. And you were not allowed to speak the students' own language. So you had to do it all through English. Mm -hmm. I found that quite fun, really, because they gave us a little box full of little gadgets, like a little pencil and a little card and a little rubber. And so when, when, when we went into the first lesson, we, we, we used this little box and said things like, this is a rubber. This is, this is a yellow rubber. This is, a, <laughs> this is a, a red box and things like that. Which, which was quite fun, fun really. But so I, I stayed there a year, and then uh, and that, that's it really, and, and carried on, and then yeah, carried on, <laughs> carried on. <laughs> wow. Now, how much training did you actually get from them before they shoved you into a classroom? Oh, uh, nothing really. Really. No, yeah, no, nothing. No. Um, no. <laughs> No, no they, they, they just sort of, um, if you were an English teacher and you had your little book and the little, actually the little book was, was it was quite, quite good actually, the little book gave you all the, all the stuff you needed, you know, teaching from the textbook, but it, it really, the, the textbook kind of embodied this method, the Berlitz method, is it, I don't, I don't know how well known it is now really, but it's, it's, it's a direct method, mm, right, you know, right. you, using only the student's mother tongue. And, and, and the book was quite quite well laid out to tell you to tell you to do that, um, and and so that, that that's, that's what I did, and uh, yeah, that's interesting. And in in the but by, art... but, by, but by the way, picking up what you said as well mm -hmm. about about just going going to Korea for one year, I I I am the same in Hong Kong. I I, I actually I, I I came here for one year, but I I've been in Hong Kong for longer longer than you. I won't say how long, but uh, I've been in here. <laughs> Well, well over, well over twenty years actually, I've been in Hong Kong, wow. but, but I only intended to stay for one year, uh, and and uh, um, I, it, it was it was it was it was luck really because at that particular point I had already changed one job. I spent a long time to, uh, working in Swansea, in South Wales, which is a beautiful area, beautiful. But but then I thought, well, well, you know, it's, I'll, I'll look somewhere else for for a change. So I took, I got a job in Canterbury, which sounds wonderful, romantic, but you know, I the the, the job I did not like it at all. And so at, at that, that point, the, the chance came to come and work on a project in Hong Kong, and I did, thinking it would be only for one year. Huh. Uh, but but once you get, you know how things are, one thing leads to another in, in, in many areas like life, doesn't it? And so one thing led to another and I just stayed, stayed here and I'm still here. And oh, wow. I, I have no desire to be living anywhere else at the moment, you, you know. Mm -hmm. Hong Kong is a very good place to be. Now, I'm curious, what, was, what were some of the cultural differences that struck you when you first arrived in Hong Kong that have long since become totally normal to you? But at the time, maybe they struck you very strongly or impacted huh. the way you thought about things. Well, it, it, w when I first came to Hong Kong, 
I felt at the time it was like being reborn, really, mm. because, um, you know, the, it, it likes, when, when a child is born, a child sort of examines everything and finds all the new things around. It was a little bit like, it's a little bit the same coming to Hong Kong, because you had all these wonderful little areas within Hong Kong. Uh, now, now that, you know, a lot of them now have been gentrified. Mm. But, um, but, but, you know, but in, the, in those days still, you know, a lot of really quite sort of traditional areas of Hong Kong where you could walk around a for ages to sort of exploring things. And also in that, at that time, I, I mean, it, it, it was going overseas, but abroad, but at the same time, Hong Kong was still a British, what it was, colony was it? I, mm. I guess to use the word colony in case it wasn't, but, you know, in any case, it was still sort of British uh, oriented, you know? Mm. And so you, you, you had the, 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 the familiar together with the unknown and the new things and, and uh, um, you know, it, it was a, an, another wonderful thing actually was um, leaving home with three suitcases. My, my, my wife and I, we, between us, we had three suitcases. One of us had two, I don't know which one of us had two, <laughs> but we had three suitcases. And, 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 and that, that sort of landing somewhere else with only three suitcases mm. was also a wonderful, a little bit like being reborn actually. Because you know, you know, you gather an awful lot of clutter in your life really. Uh, and, 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 and ha having to make, ha and having, I, I don't know what happened to all the other things really, but, but you know, coming with a, such a sh small amount of baggage and being able to start afresh like that in a new country with new people around uh, and uh, enough familiar things not to feel threatened. So, I mean, uh, you, you know, I mean, it's not like going, going into, into the depths of some unknown country really, but it was, it was, it was, it was a wonderful experience. That's yeah. nice. So, uh, did you did you arrive in Hong Kong speaking any Cantonese at all, or no, have you, have you no, did you go about no. learning it after you arrived? Yeah, I, I went. I went about going to uh, sort of some evening courses and YMCA. The YMCA gave courses. Mm -hmm. um, they mostly spent a long, long time teaching you how to ask for things in the market. But, 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 but funnily enough, you know, yeah, helpful, yeah, help, helpful in a way, <laughs> except that in the market you can point at things, you don't mm -hmm. actually need to say anything, you just point at them. <laughs> but, but, you know, that, that, anyway, that was the, that, that was the, the uh, obviously, the, so I, I learned how to ask things in the market, mm -hmm. maybe three or four times in, in different courses. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, it, 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 Cantonese is a difficult language to learn. And you know the tones, even telling the difference between different tones, different words, which can mean totally different things, uh, with just a very slight difference of tone. Mm -hmm. And so you can find out that you said something rude or something not, that you didn't intend to, <laughs> simply because you didn't say the tone quite right, and you had no idea what what, what you said wrong. And, and 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 it was it was it was hard. I I, I gather sort of Korean is also very hard. Oh, but we don't have tones. <laughs> no, no. So it's actually much easier, I believe, than than. Yeah, Cantonese I don't. I don't know. But you know, there, there, there's this there's, there's this hierarchy of languages where it, done by the Foreign Language Institute in, in in America, which are the groups of the most easy and most difficult languages mm -hmm. for Americans to use or for native English speakers to use when they go abroad. Easiest of all are things like German. And I can understand now very well why, because actually a lot of German, though it, when we learned German, it seemed ever so different. But actually, when you look back, uh, you know, ever such a lot of it was exactly the same. And they had prepositions, they had tenses, mm -hmm. they, had, they, they, they had definite and indefinite articles were used in almost, not completely, but almost the same way. Um, and, and so it's in, in many respects, you know, you're really helped, you know, transfer, transfer in a positive sense. So, um, so it, you you know Canton, Cantonese is, it belongs in the, in the most the, the, no they don't mention Cantonese because very few people learn it for, uh, outside uh, Hong Kong mm -hmm. uh, but Chinese they mm -hmm. they 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 said was the it belongs to, uh, and Korean actually both Chinese and Korean belong belong into this group of the most difficult languages to learn mm -hmm. for a native English speaker um, and and and. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, well, most people say that Cantonese 
is more difficult than Mandarin mm. because uh, you know because it, it, it because Mandarin has fewer tones and is, is easier in various ways. So Cantonese is probably one of the most difficult languages. Well, I, I mean, there's, there's, there's thousands of languages we don't know about, aren't there? But uh, right. the, the languages that we sort of hear about are one of the most difficult ones. But I managed mean, to ask for things in the market. <laughs> they can ask for a cup of tea. Can ask for a cup of tea. Oh, oh, and, and, oh and, and, and you can ask where the toilet is, actually. <laughs> actually, actually I, I, I often use this That's as, as a... Yeah, I have to use this as an example of, of you, you know, people sometimes say that you have to encounter a word eight times or some other figure before mm -hmm. you can remember it, you know, and, and that example in my life brings it home to me what rubbish that is actually, because if something is really, really important to, to mm -hmm. you. You know, at that point it was, you know, at that point where I was walking around, you, 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 you remember something at the very, very first exposure to it, you remember it. Right, so, right. so and, and now I know that that's called depth of processing. If it's something is really important to you, you you process it in a much more deep kind of way, and oh. so you remember it much better. That's and interesting. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, that explains. I, I once taught my brother all the bad words in Korean, and that's exactly what he remembers. He doesn't remember the greetings. Yeah. He remembers the bad words. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that's an example, example, isn't it? The good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, how did your own language learning experience affect you as a language teacher? Did you uh, like take mental notes on what the what your own instructor was doing right or wrong, or how you were processing everything as a student? Um, not consciously, but I, I guess subconsciously. I, I guess uh, I, I guess subconsciously the experience of having been through that. It's a bit like when you go to a, an, another country, you know, the fact that you've been into other countries before that mm. kind of alerts you to the sorts of things that that might um, come your way and might be different, don't, don't, don't they? So I, I guess I, I guess it affected, I guess it affected the, also the teaching as well. You know, you you become sort of sort of uh, subconsciously aware of the, the little difficulties that might might come. I think, yeah. Interesting. And yeah. now I'm, I'm really curious about your experiences as an expat in Hong Kong, especially yeah. since you've been in Hong Kong at at least a, a few of the, the key and critical moments in the colony's history. Like you were there before and after the handover, right? Mm. And then now at this particular moment where we're all watching the news about what's going on with Hong Kong and China and kind of yeah. our jaws dropped. So I, I wonder if you can talk a little bit about uh, the tensions you've observed, the experiences you've had uh, over the years. Yeah, well, well um, <laughs> um, the, I don't know, you know, I always think life, life is lived at many different levels at, the, at once. You, you know, the, 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 the the, the, the level at which um, I, I operate, you know, the people I know, the students that I teach, uh, throughout these years, and as you say, 1997 as well, um, you know, uh, you, you know, th throughout years, these years, at the, at, at the level of life where you live it by, by interacting with other people and getting on with your own thing, mm. um, not much has changed, changed really. Um, Yeah, <laughs> the, the, um, not not not. It, it, it's similar, really. You know, so it's, people are the same. When I go around down now, and meet 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 the people, and, and that's, that's quite similar. The students are the same mm. as well, and and uh, there's a sort of bedrock of things which don't which 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 remain the same. I th I, th I think. So daily um, life, basically. Yeah, yeah, the daily life and the, and the relationships with the people who are who are cl closer to you, not no, only sort of immediately close, but also like students whom you see quite regularly and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's similar. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think I don't think it's changed. I don't I, I'm not conscious of having things having changed, really. But also, I haven't sort of consciously stood out. Stood, consciously stood outside it either, you know, you know, to analyze it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. 
Yeah. And how do the students in Hong Kong compare to those that you've taught in the UK and in Germany? Oh, well, actually, that's one of my one of my principles in life is I try not to compare. Hmm. Uh, you know, people sometimes say to me, how do the students who teach at uh, where I am now, Baptist University, how do they compare to the students that used to for a time I was at Hong Kong University? And I honestly do not know because I, 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 you know, there's one part of me that does not want to compare mm. people. That's probably one of the reasons why I, why I really dislike assessment completely. Oh, sure. Yeah, you know, the whole the whole area of comparing mm -hmm. is sort of well, foreign to me. <laughs> foreign maybe, to me, really. Maybe my question shouldn't be so much about how the students are different, so much as how you are different as a teacher in those different situations, especially since it's it's progressed over time. How do you think your approaches and teaching and attitudes toward teaching have changed over the years and according to context? Well, I, I, I've, become, I, I've become much more relaxed in general about teaching actually, where, whereas uh, I, I, you know, uh, uh, used to be, you know, uh, I mean, all, all, always, I think, uh, actually a colleague said to me that after all these years, he still wonders why it is that he feels nervous uh, when he's going to teach in the evening. And that this was with Zoom, but also with the, he, he meant also with, with other ones as well. And it's exactly the same with me. I still feel, you know, when I'm, when I'm coming up to a Zoom class uh, now, as it is, or with the others, you know, when I'm coming up to a class, and there's a kind of tension there, still there, really. But mm. I, I guess it's not so frightening as it used to be. I, I like to think of I like to think of long ago. I I, I listened to a, a program about with actors and singers and things like that, and it was all about nerves. The main focus was, and what emerged from this program is that even the even the greatest actors and the greatest singers. Uh, they, 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 they are terribly uh, struck with nerves before they go out onto the stage, before they have to perform. Um, it said, you, you know, Dishi Fischi Diskal, the, the, the German bar baritone uh, there, it, they gave him as an example that once he was waiting to go onto the stage to sing, you know, he's so great, you would imagine that, it, that he would never be, be, be nervous at anything. He was so great, and, and, and apparently his, his little boy, his little son, was standing there and said, gosh, Dad, I hope I don't become a singer like you, because he could see how nervous his, his, his father was before he went on, you know, and the same was true, was true with actors, and the person who presented the poem, the, not the poem I'm talking about, the, the, the programme, uh, thought, uh, uh, suggested, uh, suggested that a lot of these actors and actresses they, 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 they think that nerves are a necessary part of it because the nerves kind of fill them with adrenaline, you know? Uh, they, 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 once they do go onto the stage or, or in our case, in, into the class, you know, because we were nervous beforehand, that has sort of put pent up energy inside us and we, we give more because of that. And I, 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 I remember, I've always remembered, always remembered that program. At the time I found it extremely a reassuring and extremely uh, heartening, really, you know, to know that these these great people feel nerves like that. Mm -hmm. The only one that there's only one actress who, who, who in within the context of the program never felt nerves, and that was Judy Dench. I don't know whether oh, wow. you, you know Judy Dench. Oh, of course. You know, yeah, yeah. The grand dam <laughs> herself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, apparently, what they what what the program said was that she never ever felt any nerves she was always saying well, where are you to go come on let's get on with it kind of thing wow. although of course that could be also be a, be, be a reflection of nerves can't it when you start saying oh come on let's get on with mm. it that can be but apparently, but apparently what, what they said is that she was sort of impervious to nerves huh. another one is the, the cricketer you, you wouldn't know the cricketer Ian, Ian Botham Ian Botham was a great all-rounder meaning he could bat and he could bowl he was one of the few cricketers who never ever got nervous from what he was doing but normally for everybody you know the nerves are sort of integral part of the part of the performance really they, they sort of gear you up 
and I, I, I found I found that uh, very reassuring. Really, <laughs> I wish I could find the program again. But the, those those were before the days when every single program was put onto archive. Mm. Yeah. Wow, that sounds really interesting. So you get nervous about teaching, and I assume also your your presentations too. Yes, yeah, but 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 they're, again, less really. You you get you know I, I find I get sort of um, what is it anesthetized? Not anesthetized. Sort of anyway, you know, sort of get get get, get accustomed to it. So not so much. But I, I I I remember you know when I first started to give presentations and that, especially if it was a plenary. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and I used to watch sort of a, another person going up. I used to, I, I used to kind of in my mind used to feel like somebody being getting, getting ready to be led to the scaffold. Actually, you know. Oh no. To be, yeah, you, you know. To, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's exaggeration. I mean, I wouldn't take that too literally, but but you know, sort of the the feeling of, of you know this feeling of imagining yourself that in a few minutes you're going to have to be standing up there talking to all these people, and all that. And, and you, you hope you can remember what to say. And an awful lot of it, when you, give, when you give a talk, an awful lot depends on how you feel at the moment. It doesn't, you, you know, sometimes you really feel at home and you, and you do a good job. Other times, somehow, for some reason, things don't quite gel and you, and you don't, don't give such a good performance. Mm. So, you know, all, all these uncertainties would, 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 be, would, would be quite frightening. But I, I, I guess you... I guess I've come to accept some of those uncertainties, and, and, and oh, oh, and, and also to realise if if you do make a mess of it, I think everybody makes a mess of these things sometimes. I, I don't, I, I don't know whether I mustn't say that. I mustn't say about everybody, but you know, I, I know I make a mess of things. You know, um, sometimes, sometimes, but <laughs> you know, in fact, you you still what, what's to say? live to fight another day or something like that that's true you know you you, you know no, nobody even if you have made a mess of it uh, if it's abroad if it's somewhere abroad you, you probably won't see any of the other any of those people again no, not, not for a long time anyway and um, and so li li live to fight another day yeah that's right so you can always live to fight another day so you you, you kind of get come to accept certain things that uh, i think yeah so if you had one piece of advice to give other presenters who are similarly nervous before making a presentation, what what advice would you give them? Well, I think I think uh, one piece of advice would be not to leave too long a gap where you're doing nothing before the actual presentation. Mm. You, you know, because during that gap that's the gap where, where the, the, the nervousness feeling can get inside you. So even though before the presentation you feel that you should be concentrating on what you're going to do and you can't go and do something else, surely, you know, um, you know, in fact, if you're doing something else, although you might think, oh God, this is distracting me from concentrating on the presentation I'm going to do. In fact, it's, it's, it's actually sort of distracting you also from, from, get, from getting nervous. So not to leave too much of a gap to, to prepare but not to over prepare as well um, so to prepare at the, at the, at the level of uh, meaning should we say like that you prepare all the meanings you want to say but to me i, I think i'm sure other people are different to me it, it's, a, it's a disaster to try to prepare actual wordings that you're going to use because mm. that you know because it's better better for me and, uh, and better for many other people i think if those, that can come out of your uh, out of yourself, in, out of your own meaning generating system somehow, yeah. you know, somehow it's gone in, gone in. I, I compare this a bit actually with um, plagiarism and non-plagiarism. You know, pl plagiarism is, is, is when people just use the words that were in the text. But I thought, but ideally the, the students have read all the different texts. These words have gone into their meaning system what comes out of it is then their own meaning system, their own. And it's a little bit like that with giving a talk as well. You know, what comes out sort of should ideally comes out of your own meaning system. I've just made that word up. It's probably a silly, a, a silly word. But anyway, that's, uh, you know, your, your own sort of system of thinking and that. Okay. And that way it's much more spontaneous. And also you, res you, you, you respond more to the... Um, 
to, 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 the, to, to the signals from the signals from the audience. Um, sure. And, and which are, I, I guess another piece of advice I'd give actually is, is if, if you're looking at your audience, as everybody says you should do, you know, to, to get their response and see how you should change it. And, and uh, you know, uh, try not to focus on the one person who looks bored. <laughs> <laughs> I find that's a terrible temptation. <laughs> You know that if, if there's somebody in in the audience who looks totally bored and sort of sort, sort of um, you, you know and sort of not at all not at all interested mm. you, you're, you're because you're so so keen on doing a, a reasonable job yourself you kind of you, you, your attention is drawn to this person who looks bored and, and you and and and, and, that, and, and that's a bad that's a bad a bad idea I think. Right. It's uh, difficult to know how to, how to change it, really. <laughs> well, I think it's it's similar to teachers, right? Focusing on that one negative evaluation yeah. from a student, and as opposed that's, to all of the other praise. Yeah, that's 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 right. Yeah, just a little thing like he or she should have spoken more slowly or something like that, you know, right. you, you know, then you think, oh my God, I'm going to change that next time. <laughs> right, and that's the only thing that sticks in your mind, not yeah. all the good stuff, yeah. But if, if you can use this kind of feedback positively uh, to, to, to make any old alterations that are, that, are, that, are, that, are, that are good, you know, this is very useful feedback to have, really. I mean, I, I know when I get the evaluations, I, I sort of, you know, I sort of dread them, really dread them. Right. Um, but, uh, but, but, you know, they, 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 do, they do point to, to they, they, they do fulfill a useful function, provided you realize that every student responds, reacts in a different kind of way mm. to it. So, so that in any group, you'll have some who don't like what you did at all, you know, with right. others really like, you hope there'll be others who liked it. <laughs> <laughs> you hope, anyway. Yeah. Well, I'm curious too, you have an extensive catalog of publications behind you. Uh, and I'm curious about the experience of publishing your first academic book. Book? Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, it's, it's funny. Uh, I guess tracing it all back. Again, this is a little bit serendipity, really, uh, because I remember I, I, I organized a, a, a seminar on communicative language teaching. To, you know, based on the idea that we'd done a lot about communicative syllabuses and, and, and all that, but not much about the methodology of communicative language teaching, which at that point was true that this was, you know, sort of 20, maybe 30 years ago more. Uh, yeah. Um, and, 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 I, and so I wanted to sort of, I, I thought, well, based on this seminar, uh, I'll try and publish a little collection of articles from the seminar. And so I mentioned this to a, 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 a materials writer who, who's actually a very, very well known. Uh, you never know who is still well known and who's not no longer well known. I know, but he was very well known. And I said, and I said, you know, I'll try. I'm going to try to publish these articles. And he said, well, he said, I don't think that'd be very good, really. I think you could probably uh, produce something better yourself, just yourself. So up to that point, I'd never for a moment thought of doing anything longer than, a, than an article. You know, it seemed to be, you know, that seemed to be as far as my, as far as my, my 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 breath would take me, so far as writing was concerned. So I, I thought, well, why not? So I, I did. I sort of sat down and said, well, I've got to start start doing something like that. You know, so something longer. Really, you can't you can't just do little itty bits <laughs> only. So. So, so I sat down and wrote it. The first draft that I wrote, this was communicative language teaching, that mm. book. Okay, sure. Published by Cambridge is one. Mm. That was my first. And the first draft that I, I wrote was frankly awful. And, and you know, the, <laughs> the, the, the feedback from the reviewers was, was, was sort of, negative you know wow. uh, and, and, and and you know including things like the the style it was written in and things like that you know it was too academic I, i'd written it in too academic a way and so i i, I decided when all this came back uh, you know was something I, I, it sort of um, steeled me it made you know sort of gripped me really i thought well i'm not going to have this you know and so i, I got down to rewriting the whole book in a different style, and 
I, I thought of it like changing gear in a car. You know, when you change gear in a car, you suddenly go into a different gear and, and the engine works differently. So we decided to change gear and I decided to sort of try to really try to envisage the, the audience. I think that's very important for, for writing, to try to envisage your audience. I tried to envisage an audience and speak to them as directly as possible. None, you know, sort of cut out the high polluting academic sort of, you know, you know, the, this concept of this, the concept of that, you know. So I decided I wanted to write it for, 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 for people who are teaching. And so I, I rewrote it with all, all that in, in, in mind. Uh, and and I, I, I remember one of the reviewers saying, who, whom I know, you know, he, he, I knew that he, he had done it. Uh, he said, uh, when, I, when I'd finished it, he said, gosh, he said, I knew you were a hard worker, but I didn't think you could rewrite a whole book in, in, in so many months. I, I'm amazed myself, really. But it's amazing <laughs> how, you, you, you know, when, when something spurs you on and really gets inside you, uh, I think a word for it nowadays is grit, I think. You know, mm. when something really gets inside you, it's amazing what you can do. Um, and, and, and so I, I rewrote that and, and then, uh, and, and well, fortunately it was then became successful and, 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 and also I was, in a sense, I was quite lucky because it, it came at a time when the whole world was beginning to take on communicative language teaching. So it, so it got readers in, in, in lots of different countries, you see. Um, a little bit embarrassing now because when we're still still actually when I go to other countries there are sort of t teachers who who grew up with that book mm. uh, some of them said it was the first book they could really understand which made, made me happy really because I, I, I yeah um, I mean the first book about la language teaching methodology that they could really understand which so, so but still when I when, when I go to these other places there are people who remember me <laughs> Who connect me with that book but that book was written now 40 nearly 40 years ago so I, it always makes me think I, I really ought to get down and write another <laughs> one but you know it's, it's one heck of a hard you know it's one heck of a strenuous job mm. uh, writing a book you have to sort of decide that you're going to dedicate a large section of your life and your energy and your attention to that for, for, for a long period so you've got to be really really convinced so Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was convinced then, you know, but if, 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 if there was a book which I, which I was not convinced in, I, I would not be able to give that much energy to it. I think, I think, you know, a lot of it comes from your own conviction, I think. Uh, that, that's what, another reason why I, I sometimes sort of question this objective oriented approach where you're supposed to give students little objectives. Uh, if objectives are given to them from outside, they're never going to identify with them these objectives so strongly as if they develop the objectives from within their own uh, identity, their own system, their own self system, really. So, yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Well, that actually uh, meshes nicely with the other question I wanted to ask the next question, which is what lessons did you take from writing that first book? that have carried you through uh, the, I guess, the, the most recent 40 years. And also what would you, uh, what advice would you give to somebody who is thinking about trying to go into academic publishing? Well, I, I find it difficult now to sort of formulate what to say because mm. in many ways, the whole world of academic publishing appears to be different now from what mm. I can see. You know, from all people, from people, not only from myself, but other people. A lot of it seems to be driven by getting into top tier journals, you know, getting into a Scopus journal or an SSCI journal, um, rather than, you know, sort of publishing as being a, a means to, to sort of um, discuss your own ideas, to, to, to sort of transmit your own ideas and get discussion and things like that. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I've got sort of um, pe people I know, f former students, for example, who, who are talking about journals, and it's got to be an SSCI journal, and it's got to be a scope of journal. I sympathize with them as students, you know, they've got, they've got to get this because the, 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 the people who I mean, it's all, it's all, it's all driven by sort of a mechanical kind of um, 
uh, um, promotion things. Mm -hmm. A lot, a lot of it is, isn't, you know, if you get things into an SSCI journal, you're one step higher in the promotion sort of system, you're, you're, or your institution gets a little bit more credit in the, in the, in, in the publicity system and things like that. Uh, so I, I really sympathise with the students that they can't simply get down and decide, oh, okay, now this is what I want to say. These are the people I would like to say it to. This is the style I would like to use, which might not be academic, because you know a lot of the academic style is, is just frankly is just a, a sort of a facade, really, of you know putting putting things in complicated ways and and, and think, you know ne never saying things in simple words if you if you can find complicated words to say it in. Mm -hmm. um, so so you, you know it, it's, it's a shame. I, I wish I could think see some sort of. Uh, way i don't know i don't know really i i, I mean I, I, at the moment i, I think i think people do, i guess people have to accept that that is part of what it is that if they want well well I, 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 publishing ha, has two aspects to it well many aspects but two of them are one is the sheer pleasure of, of formulating your own ideas and communicating communicating them to other people and hopefully the other people will benefit from it maybe also give you some feedback from it you know that, that is one that's all part of a sort of a a creative sort of give and take you know mm -hmm. the other side of publishing is getting using it as a means to to to, to get promotion to to be you know the, the, there's a there's another there, there's an there, there, there's another sort of a, a web, web um, group uh, on, which always talks about what do you do in order to make sure that your articles are read by more and more people sort of thing you know that sort of sort of mechanical making it making making it more more visible kind of aspect of it um i i, I guess that's the other side of it so i, I, I suppose that the, the thing to do is to try to is to try to it's like a game really it's, it's, it's in some way, in some respects, a, a very silly game, I, I think, you know, but, but, it, but it's, it's not, it's not we, us, it's, it's, it's the publishers and the, and the employers and things who set the rules of it. You know, publishing is a game in that respect. You have to try to get a certain type of um, article and all that. And, and, and the, other, the other side of it is that it is a real sort of pleasurable thing to be in, in on. If you can manage to Combine those two, um, do the, do it pleasurably, but at the same time, for your own survival in your own career, you've got to be aware of the rules of the game, so that you try to do it in ways where the, 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 these not only these publish actually the publishers are not the worst. The worst ones are the, are the, are the, are the people who 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 praise who who are sort of evaluators and, and that sort of thing. But, but but try to try to do it in some way that they will also give you enough brownie points, as we used mm. to say, for it. That, but not to, not to forget the the, the 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 ways in which it it is actually just a, a, a pleasure a pleasurable thing and a and a constructive thing, and and. and a little bit like when some, sometimes people say to me, I, "I'm looking for a PhD topic." topic mm. have you got any suggestions <laughs> i mean you, you know no not really it has to grow from outside you and what what you really feel is 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 worthwhile doing and what what you think you can can uh yeah it has has to really mm. <laughs> entirely and, and based it, on your your passions and interests and what motivates yeah, you right? yeah yeah okay. that's right yeah, I often use the word organic. It has to grow. You, you know, mm -hmm. I remember somebody pull, pulling me up on it, up on it once. This is at, a, at an interview. You often use the word organic. What exactly do you mean? You know, but it, <laughs> it, it's sort of, it needs to sort of grow out of your own life and your own your sure. and you, your, your own being. If what grows out of it can also uh, can also uh, satisfy some of these other things, like giving you the brownie points you need in order to get promotion. Then, then so much better. But if, but if the first thing is missing, you know, growing out of you as a person and your what your beliefs and what you want to do, mm. I just think it makes a it makes it makes life less less enjoyable. Really, really, yeah. I think it does anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, along those same lines, uh, I know in your in your 
time span of teaching. You've done the direct approach at the Berlitz School. Uh, yeah. You've done uh, the audio lingual method, or I think you described it as the audio visual, uh, a vid yeah. audio visual method, which is kind of yeah. similar. You were on the forefront of, of uh, communicative language teaching. And we've moved now into this, you know, Zoom online era where we're more connected than ever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think you've called it the post methods era, yeah. right? Or where it can be more eclectic, where teachers are are taking the yeah. bits they like and kind of yeah. putting it together yeah. what works for them. How how have you felt over the course of the development of ELT and where do you see us going next? Well, I, th I think now that the now that uh, um, the People who stopped believing. I mean, I mean, belief is often a thing which which depends upon the fashions of the time, and the fashions of the time were, were always led us to believe that there must be some definite method, and, and that somebody has got an answer somewhere, some has got some authority. I guess it might. I wonder if it's part of the general kind of falling down of the belief in authority that now people we don't believe that there's that there's a that there's a fixed method that we should use. I think that will carry on. I think people will just find new, new other ways of, of sort of integrating uh, the different kinds of techniques into an approach which suits their own personality and their own situation and what they want to do. You, you know, I mean, uh, you know, sort of, the, the general disbelief, the general belief that there's there's, there's no final answer to any anything. Uh, I, I I I mean that's something I genuinely believe in myself. But having said that, uh, it, it's me me being fixated on a belief. You know the belief that there's no final answer to anything, and and and, and I often say that to students. You know if if you 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 know don't don't start thinking that there's a definite answer to these things mm -hmm. I, you have to be careful because if you if you if, if, if you're not careful they'll start thinking oh my god he's no good you know he doesn't know the answer to anything <laughs> you, 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 you know. <laughs> but, but you know but but uh, but 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 you know you know the, the fact that there's no definite answer to teaching methodology i i, I guess that will stay in place but it'll, it'll just be different you know more and more different sorts of um requirements do more and more different possibilities I mean, the Zoom thing, you know, uh, 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 sort of made us see different possibilities and, and very often quite, um, quite creative possibilities as well. Right. And, and in some ways, I, I, found, uh, I, I found the relationship with the students with Zoom in certain, you know, I mean, you know in, uh, overall, it's, it, it, it's not, not so enjoyable. You know, you don't get the interaction with them. They don't get the interaction with each other and all that. But there are also some positive sides that the the shy ones, you know, are, are, are often more inclined to talk when they're behind a microphone. I think, I think so. Anyway, and you know, sometimes you, I, when I'm sitting there in front of the computer and talking to them, and I hear hear that I can't see them because they 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 very rarely only two or three of them out of out of a large class. Put, put on their photos it's funny simple mm. but <laughs> put, put on, on their, their, their their own pictures but but you know i think it's, it's quite quite sort of touching really when you hear little 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 um little responses from you yeah 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 you know the, I, I find it's a sort of a different kind of a relationship mm. same with everywhere in life actually different kinds of relationships but every relationship I mean, sometimes relationships can be bad. I know, and I'm not saying all, but you know, if, if, whatever the relationship is, it has the the possibility of of, of, of being sort of fruitful and and, and satisfying. Mm -hmm. I think that's the same with the same with Zoom type things, really. Uh, you, you know, it's, I, 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 at first, I, at first, I, I I made a mess with Zoom actually, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I, I I thought I thought it would satisfy everybody. I, I was put off, frankly, I, first of all, I was put off by the, the word Zoom. I thought, oh my God, this is just another of these, these whiz kid things where they think up a, a clever name for it and call it Zoom. So I, had, I mean, that was silly of me, you know, that was my, that was my, my own pre prejudice, you know, against this, this, kind, this kind of work. But I thought, oh no, this is just, just one of these fads, you know. And so I, I sort of, I, so, so I, I thought I could do the same thing by recording my PowerPoints with a voiceover. 
Now, in fact, it uh, uh, in fact it takes a long time to do a voiceover for a PowerPoint. It probably takes you more in terms of total time. Probably takes you more total time to do a, a, a PowerPoint with voiceover than it does to do your Zoom session mm -hmm. with your with, with 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 whatever you've got, you know. But anyway, first of all, for the for the first two, when, when this when this uh, um, virus situation came about. For two weeks, I, I I I just gave voiceovers, and then message got through to me, you know, by the subtle ways that students have got, you know, uh, you know that that you know they they really wanted something with interaction, not just this. Looking back now, now I, I understand it really, you know, they, that now that when they talk to each other, I I do understand it. But th just at the point, I thought, well, well, I might just as well do a voiceover, and then they can play it again, and, and if they like, and they get exactly the same. They, they get the PowerPoint and any pictures and things like that. And they get me saying things and all that, you know, for, for, for better or for worse. But it turned out it was not, you know, it was not acceptable, you know, and, and, and I'm, I'm glad that, 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 that I'm glad that, that that's, that's another example of how feedback can really be very useful mm. and make you feel sort of, uh, sort of caught out when it first comes, but then it's going to be very useful. So, so with that, I, I sort of, well, well, I became a Zoom teacher, and and I, 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 I actually a very useful actually it was a very useful uh, a little article I, I came across was that uh, was she she is a she's a Cotisol lady I think, mm. and the article I think I got it on the Coti either on the Cotisol website or on the Teacher Voices website I don't know, but it was all about starting with Zoom. The, the name of the lady is Virginia Hansline or Hansley. Oh, yeah. Sure, yeah, sure, she's I don't know how to say it. You know, I, I hope she, I'm sure she won't mind me mentioning it because I'm, I'm mentioning it with with a lot of sort of praise, if you like. <laughs> yeah, you know, but that she she you know she brought it home to me that it, I read it at a point where I'd I'd seen a list. This might also have been on the Coach Diesel website, I, I think, you know, I'm not quite sure. A list of all the things that we now have to learn in order to do Zoom. And there's a list of about 12 things that we've now got to master to do before we can do Zoom. And I didn't know any of the things. I thought, oh God, I'm sunk. I can never do all that. But this, uh, this article approaches it from a different direction. You approach it from the direction of what do you, what, what do you really want to do with your teaching? Pedagogically, what do you think is best? And in what ways can the new situation and the new uh, technology help you to do what you feel you like to do? And you can basically forget everything else. All these other, all, all these other things which you don't really understand, doesn't matter. If, you've, if you can find some things to put into operation, what you feel you would like to do with the students, that's the way to go. And, and, and so, and so that, that, you know, that was a sort of a, a, a sort of, changing a ch changing perspective for me so mm. I'm, I'm gra grateful for that, <laughs> that, that that little article there and 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 uh, yeah so you, you know you can, yeah anyway yeah so that, that, that's it <laughs> that's interesting now i'm that's curious uh, you yeah. said there, there's there's no definite answer about with me which yeah. methodology is best do you remember yeah. exactly when you realized that um No, I think it's just been a gradual kind of falling away of the belief that there are some people who know answers. You know, I don't know whether I don't know to what extent this is typical. But I, I remember, for example, when I was a student at university, I used to think that all the other people at university they were all people who knew answers. Mm -hmm. and I didn't, you know. So, so I, 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 was, I sort of had to be in a, in in a in a supplicant, uh, kind of stance you know mm -hmm. to get the answers but i think gradually you know the the, the belief I, maybe it's a more part of the way the world has gone you know that we don't believe now very much that there are people who know answers that's what, that's what that's one reason why the world is so difficult to govern mm -hmm. really that you know nobody believes that the, the that, that there are people who know the answers for us mm -hmm. and i think it's, it's the same with the, the same with language teaching really because when I first started language teaching, I was trained in this audio-visual method. And, the, you know, the people, the trainers, as, as, as they call them then, you know, they, they really push, pushed it that this was the method that you had to do. And, and all the students will be absolutely keen on it. 
you know, because you're doing an audiovisual method with, with, with pictures on the screen, they'll be so motivated. And uh, I, I mean, when it didn't work out like that, I thought it was my fault, really. Mm -hmm. I, I guess that's another thing, you know, gradually you, you, you come to realize that if things don't quite work, it's not always your own fault. It's sometimes it, it's that it's that whoever asked you to do whatever you're doing did not really have the right idea of what was the best thing for you to do. Mm. And so, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're coming up on an hour. I've definitely kept you long enough. But my final question for all of our guests is usually, what's the best advice you've ever gotten? Best advice I've ever gotten. Oh gosh, <laughs> oh dear me, that really needs a lot of thought, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I guess it's related to what we've just been talking about. Don't believe that there's somebody else who knows the definite answers to your to your issues. I think maybe. Maybe. Nice but, oh, oh, ah, always carry on searching. To carry on searching, yeah. That actually, I think that, that, that that's related to that. But I think that's an even even, even better one. Um, th there's a German quotation. In case anybody knows German, "Es irrt der Mensch so lang er strebt." Uh, people make mistakes so long as they are trying. So you know that life is always a search, a search for different things, and, and, and we don't, we, so we have to carry on searching. Once we don't, once we stop searching, um, we, we might sort of, um, sort of vegetate internally, you know, mm. because searching for new ways and new things. That's one of the reasons why language, language is a, is a, languages are so good, because you're always, Listen, I'm going to read out here one of the metaphors for language learning that one of the students wrote, because it touches on this. Learning a second language, I, I, I really thought those, those metaphors were really good. This, anyway, here's this one. Learning a second language is like discovering an unknown path, because it will lead you to a brand new world you have never met before. No, that's true. That's true of language learning. You know, it takes you into unknown areas. That's why, you, you know, I, I'm really glad I learned languages, actually, because it's taken me, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's learning languages has really brought me here to, to Korea, <laughs> um, virtually to Korea, <laughs> you know, wow. I, you know, and, and, and it's, it's, it's very true that, you know, to, 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 to find things which will take you into new worlds to search and find and find look for things which are going to take you into new worlds that would be i think oh dear i think my i think my one piece of advice i'd better be careful it seems to have grown into three already <laughs> <laughs> but they they all relate that is really one i think very fantastic piece of advice because that's that's how career paths and life paths work right yeah 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 that's fantastic yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, on that note, uh, I think we can call it an evening. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Don't uh, don't leave the, the Zoom meeting yet. I'm just going to stop the recording. We'll say goodbye to everybody who might be watching this. Okay. And then you and I can say goodbye a little more informally after uh, yeah. we're done recording. So okay. thank you so much for joining okay. us today, Bill. It's been yeah. a true delight talking to you. And Thanks to everybody who's watching this now. Thank you for joining us for our AMA uh, video series. We hope to see you again next time. Yeah, Lindsay and anybody else who happens to be there, thank you very much. I've enjoyed it very thank much. You. Thanks. <laughs>